We all know the value of IoT condition monitoring, but what does it take to connect existing machines to the cloud? We spoke with Damon Thompson at Beckhoff to find out. Many vendors, including Beckhoff, offer gateway devices that essentially act as adapters between older equipment and modern connectivity. For industrial automation vendors, flexibility is important. Customers may want to run solutions such as condition monitoring on-premises, at the edge, or in the cloud, and options must play nice with a range of third-party platforms and protocols. So uh, we have a package here that we've uh, have built that will help a controls engineer take data from the machine, either an existing machine or a new machine, um, and really be able to uh, leverage that data to find a, a actionable information. It's built into the same uh, development environment that they wrote the actual machine control code in, so it's familiar. And we try to make it really nice drag and drop to bring these analytics tools in, associate them with pieces of data, um, really, really empowering the controls engineer to start doing some data analytics. The number one thing from a plant engineer or a plant, um, a plant production manager is uptime, right? Uh, so no matter if it's an older machine, the existing brownfield as they call it, or a, a greenfield project, everybody, every machine benefits from some sort of condition monitoring or analysis to see if the machine's going to fail um, before it goes down to help uptime. Um, so it is a benefit to anybody, uh, any of the production facilities. Uh, some of the existing equipment can be actually um, tied in very simply uh, with devices that act as an IoT gateway. And even if it's a really old machine, the only thing you can access that is with digital data, maybe you know 24 volt signals to bring that data into IO terminals, even a device net or serial or OSI, uh, whatever it might be, um, there's a gateway for that that turns it into a, a more modern protocol like MQTT to be sending it to uh, Microsoft Azure, AWS, or to TwinCat analytics tools. Uh, legacy machines, we can you know connect to them. Uh, you can either run that analytics uh, right at the cell level. You can bring that into an enterprise server or even run that on the cloud for let's say an OEM that's distributing their machines to end users around the world. Bring it back to a, uh, an, like a virtualized uh, Azure VM, AWS VM and run that predictive maintenance there. Or like I said, all the way back down and run it on the machine on a very small device. Uh, basically, we can couple some of these small devices with the data analytics running on it with I.O. terminals. Uh, Backup provides, I think, 300 something more different uh, unique I.O. terminals, bringing in any kind of sensor data really you can think of, uh, anything even if it's on a, a legacy field bus. So uh, either adding new uh, sensors to the machine and gathering new data that maybe wasn't available or gathering a lot of the harnessing, I should say, a lot of the data that's already existing in the machine. You know, maybe example, pulling data in off of the field bus from the existing drive for motor temperature or uh, a power monitoring, uh, or even adding you know, complete new systems in uh, to monitor the three-phase power coming in and the power quality in, and seeing if that varies, maybe there's a problem with some motors. Yeah, so it's always a challenge. It's each, each machine is unique. So it really depends on looking at the machine and then figuring out what are the, are the failure points that we want to monitor for predictive maintenance. So, for example, a CNC machine, uh, the, very, the accuracy is very important. And so you definitely want to monitor uh, any vibrations that are off, you know, not in the normal for running that process. Another very critical thing for, say, a CNC machine would be uh, coolant. So you know, making sure that the coolant pump is actually running and, and it doesn't fail during the middle of cuts, which can ruin parts, ruin tools. Um, so it really ends up looking at the specific machine and looking at what the major failure points are and, and kind of a risk analysis to figure out which data do I need to collect to monitor to see if that device will fail, whether it be an audio signal, a temperature signal, a vibration signal, et cetera.